All right, let's move over to page 69, and nice. So here's the deal. Originally, I had written, recorded, and began editing a half-hour-long video about why steampunk failed as a subculture. Then it occurred to me, wow, what the fuck am I doing with my life? So rather than sit down and edit a half-hour me babbling about shit nobody cares about, I'm going to make the shortest version possible. So why did steampunk fail as an alternative subculture? Let's see if I can answer this question as fast as possible. Okay, here's the answer. Nobody could agree on what steampunk was, and sure as fuck couldn't agree on what it should stand for, if anything. Goodbye. Okay, a little more detail. So steampunk proper kicks off with The Difference Engine by William Gibson and another guy. The book is kind of an experiment in a hypothetical new genre of fiction. What if we had a Victorian drama in a Dickensian cyberpunk dystopia? It kind of doesn't work. The book is dull, plotting, and mostly just an alternative history experiment. You know, what if mad scientists ran the English Empire? It's okay. So, romantic cyberpunk and brass, or, you know, pure steampunk is one definition. Think of this novel, the movie Steam Boy, and the game Frostpunk. Okay, here's where shit gets more complex. Steampunk is also used to describe any high fantasy work that is set in an industrial age instead of the Middle Ages. No more castles, now it's a steam city with big gears and crap. Think a Studio Ghibli background. So, your average anime, basically. Finally, we have steamy cosplay, as in no definition, just brass, gears, goggles, and top hats, like, you know, Doctor Who extras. So now we have a spectrum. On the left, we have true cyberpunk stuff. On the right, we have fantasy with gears. And below in the cesspit, we have cosplay crap. So something like Dishonored or Arcane would be in the middle. Okay, we got that. Great. Now, with all that in mind, tell me how you're going to make a lifestyle out of it. Go on. Give it your best shot. Really, really abuse the comment section. Okay, okay, in all seriousness, you see the problem here, right? So let's sidetrack to some long-running champions of subcultures, goth and punk. The guiding principles of punk are anti-authoritarianism, disestablishmentism, and DYI. It's got to be against the man, it's got to be against the system, and anyone can do it with, like, no experience or training whatsoever. It's a pretty wide net. Something that you can see in all incarnations of punk throughout the years. What is goth? It's punk with a romanticization of death and the macabre instead of DYI. You know, sellouts. Vampires aren't sexy to goths because they're suave. They're sexy because they're the undead. Let's break it down by song. For punk, the subhuman said it best. I don't believe in the system. For goth, ministry said, every day is Halloween. For steampunk, Abney Park said, we're airship pirates. Deep meaningful words. So, what happened? Where did steampunk come from, and where did it go? Well, in the 2000s, back when there was an internet and not just heavily controlled social media apps, anyone could post anything online and somehow a community might come out of it. Same shit happened with steampunk, so a lot of people got into it, only none of them really agreed on what it was. 90% of the drama relating to it was people fighting over what the fuck it actually meant. <laughs> The two camps were people who knew what steampunk was, and weird cosplayers and proto-tumblr people who just wanted a costume bin. They didn't like all those people saying stuff like, we should have a shared definition of what steampunk means. Fuck you nerds, quit gatekeeping my cosplay ideas or your desires for meaning and consistency. I do not recommend reading any of the incredibly dumb arguments these nerds had with each other. It's basically group A saying, steampunk should mean something, and group B saying, no, it should mean nothing, it just be whatever I want it to be. Fun fact, group B won. But remember, no causation without correlation or whatever, I don't give a fuck. So I'll keep a teeny bit from the original script in. Look at a lot of the artists who got described as steampunk. They're kinda all over the place. You've got gypsy punk, you've got folk music, hip hop, lots of goth bands, and existing acts like Voltaire and Rasputina kinda lotted in there. First up, Dr. Steel. Real name, Ryan Vernon. He is perhaps the best example of steampunk incoherence. Despite being billed as a musician, Dr. Steel was predominantly known for being an internet personality. The genre he performed is listed as industrial hip-hop. This is the genre best known for modern bands like Death Grips and Horror. Dr. Steel's main gimmick was a street team slash RPG-esque fandom called the Army of Toy Soldiers. They were notably run by a model and cosplayer, Kate Lambert, 
who is best known as Cato. The whole thing has a rather Jonan Vasquez-esque sense of humor to it, and it's very of the 2000s. How all this relates to neo-Victorian cyberpunk is only skin deep. If anything, Dr. Steele is a better case study of pre-social media internet culture. Professor Elemental is a chap-hop artist, which is like hip-hop, but steampunk. So then there were two. I'll assume that Dr. Steele has exclusive arching rights to Professor Elemental. Also, what level does Dr. Steele clock in on the Guild of Calamus Intense EMA system? Comment to let me know what level you think Dr. Steele is, and if you think he can arch Dr. Venture. So let's wrap this up with a nice little bow. Tomorrow, you wake up and say, I'm gonna be goth. What do you do? You sit down and you watch The Crow, The Lost Boys, The Addams Family. You buy a bunch of Edward Gorey and Anne Rice books. You buy a bunch of creepy black clothing. You go to the local goth night and you dance to Sisters of Mercy. That's all super consistent in theme. It's macabre. It's death-centric. It's black. Ye etc. You have four decades of music, books, comics, movies, and clothing trends to back up your new lifestyle, plus everything that's coming out of the scene right now. Like, you go goth, you'll never run out of rabbit holes to fall into for the subculture. Same thing with punk. Let's say tomorrow you wake up and say, I'm gonna be a steampunk. What would you even do? You've got maybe half a decade, at most, of material to work with. What's your ethos? What are your politics? What do you even wear? Is it gonna be neo-Victorian outfits, period-accurate outfits, or anime-inspired cosplay? Are you a neo-Luddite against modern technology, or is it all about clockwork goodness? What kind of music are you going to listen to? Classical, Gilbert and Sullivan, Dr. Steele? Just looking at the bands that Steampunk Conventions booked, it's like 90% gypsy jazz, folk punk, and a few goth bands swapped out the black for brown. Like, a Steampunk night would be, like, folk punk and goth, I guess? You could see, this shit could never be a lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to see why Steampunk never took off as an alternative subculture. Let's be blunt and just say the obvious. It's silly. Steampunk is super silly. It's silly cosplay for people who don't want heavy meaning or politics in their conventions. It's silly cosplay for the apolitical. It's just too damn silly. Thanks for watching, I guess. Next week, I'll be back with a five hour long lecture about why I think white people should be allowed to have dreadlocks. I'm serious. Mr. Burns, we've got witnesses, precedent, and a paper trail a mile long. Yes, well, I have ten high priced lawyers. <laughs> Goodbye, and don't subscribe. But in all seriousness, I'm gonna make more videos about weird stuff nobody has ever heard of. The next video is gonna be on the Crime Thing Classic off the map. Cheerio, old chaps! You have huge balls, a deadly partner, armed headquarters, a huge henchman army, and a flying car? You're like a level 9 or 10. If you just have a sidekick and enough change to ride the New Jersey PATH train, you're a 4. Guess who's a 4?